Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, today, the webinar that we're going to be doing, as you know, is establishing a meditation practice, creating space for stillness. So if you haven't had the opportunity to see any of our other webinars previously, we've had a series of every week we've been having a few webinars and um, they are centering around um, wellness amid all the changes that are occurring right now for everyone. And, um, and part of what we've talked about, and, if, and what I was going to say is if you haven't had the opportunity to see uh, previous um, webinars, please let us know. You can reach out to Heather and she can um, reach out to me and we can get some of those webinars emailed to you. But they, the first one that we had done as far as we've been talking, we consistently come back to the concept of mindfulness. We all to today specifically how to establish a meditation practice and we're really fortunate to have Camille joining us um, so just to give you the basic information in case you don't aren't aware with Blomquist Hell we're here to help you with any of your our services whether uh, or independent over zoom or cost And our hours, we also have evening appointments, um, Saturday appointments. So during the week, we're open 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And um, on Saturdays, it's, I believe, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So please feel free to reach out to us. Okay. So um, we'll go ahead and put this full slide up. And then we're going to be... Um, Basically, in this process, and really any time in our lives, but especially now where uh, there's more isolation, the importance of um, th these basic, basic things that help us maintain our wellness. So remembering, and I'm sure you've heard this before, but just the emphasis is so important, remembering to take a break from watching, reading, listening to news and social media. Social media right now is a gift for us in ways to be able to reach out when we may be especially isolated. Um, we just want to make sure that we are paying close attention to how, how and as we're going to be talking about today, how the things that we're watching and listening to and seeing are affecting us, how, we, how we're feeling, how it affects our thoughts, how it um, affects our health even. So super important, especially now, to take care of our bodies. Our bodies and our minds are inseparable. Um, breathing, stretching, meditation. And again, that's specifically why we've reached out to do this meditation uh, webinar today to, to ask Camille to help us with this. Um, do your best just to eat, eat well, eat things that feed, feed your mind and your body, um, getting all, you know, the, the, the various aspects of um, the things that our bodies need. We don't, and it, you know, sometimes we know that it's important to get vegetables and protein and balanced carbs, those, those three basic categories. And it, it, I, personally, I, I love vegetables and um, I've just kind of had to switch my mindset to frozen vegetables. I can do frozen. It doesn't have to be fresh. Where we're kind of coming up on more limited access to, um, or being encouraged to be more cautious about how frequently we're in the stores, we can we can make adaptations and we can do everything with moderation. It doesn't have to be done perfect. Perfection is a myth. <laughs> it creates it creates anxiety. So we can can things to get out it's possible we are so fortunate to live with these beautiful mountains and and wide open spaces close to us and easily accessible get out and and you could go away from people and enjoy that sunshine that gets us that vitamin d and the the um endorphins and and move our bodies we know that moving our bodies helps not only our body our our body but it's it's significant with our minds as well with managing and feeling joy make you know set if we can set goals to get at least somewhere between seven to nine hours of sleep i'll constantly hear people say i can get by with four or five so there's a difference in getting by and being well 
And really our brains, we know there's just plenty of research that establishes our, our brains need time to reset. So does our body. So if we can put that at a priority, it's, it's super important. And as we're doing these things to nurture ourselves and take care of ourselves, we want to keep in mind that, you know, avoiding the use of anything to what is, is referred to as self-medication. When we, we can use food in excess, we can use anything in excess, alcohol, um, drugs, those things that would kind of try to numb us instead of being able to actually nurture ourselves. Okay. So just move on, just a basic um, information regarding mindfulness. Um, so we hear this term, what, mindfulness, and, and really there's just a very simple definition of it. And it's, there are a few um, concepts that are included in that simple definition. It's intentional and it's observation without judgment or attachment. The first time I, I heard this, I remember thinking, how can you observe, if, if you're talking about our thoughts, our feelings, our behavior or ur behavioral urges, I remember thinking as somebody who experiences anxiety, um, thinking that's absurd. <laughs> There's no way for me to, uh, to observe that I'm feeling anxious without judging that. But man, I will tell you, the more that I focus on mindfulness and this very simple definition of it, 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 it's a, it's a life changer. It's possible to observe without judging in terms of observing that, well, and getting curious about that instead of, oh my gosh, everything's falling apart. I'm just going to get more anxious. We can feed back into uh, our our sympathetic nervous system. We can feed back into the portions of our brain, the amygdala specifically, that uh, that really is where anxiety and fear function. And, and, and when we can observe and using this prefrontal portion of our brain, when we can observe, we can actually get curious and actually change the state of our bodies, literally change the state of our bodies and of our minds. And so as we're talking about that, just please be open to, it doesn't mean that we, you know, observe, I'm feeling anxious or I'm observe, I'm feeling, I'm, I'm feeling discouraged or I'm feeling, it doesn't mean we, we um, by not judging it, that doesn't mean we, we like it, that we can't experience the various feelings we're having. It's just that we aren't going to attach specifically to that specific emotion. There's that element of curiosity. It's opening mindfulness is rather than avoiding pain. Rather than thinking, oh my gosh, I'm anxious, I need to go do something to, um, to avoid this. Uh, there, there is a difference between distraction, which sometimes is very helpful. Exercise can be a great distraction. Um, other, other things that can be functional. But the difference between distraction and avoidance is that distraction is a round trip ticket. Avoidance is like a one-way trip on a one-way plane ticket. what was leading to some of that anxiety or that discouragement or whatever we're experiencing. So um, again, it's, it's, it's being willing to observe. And then through the practice specifically of meditation, learn skills to be able to observe and, um, and, and, and truly to be able to impact our, our experience, to impact our emotion to impact our mind, and it, it doesn't have to control us, which is amazing. It's awesome. Um, so it's about experiencing each new moment instead of you know fixating on or fixing on the future, reaching for the future, or getting fixed on the on the past. And and the skills that like like meditation today and and these other mindfulness skills we're going to talk about are the actual behaviors that we practice that help us to become more aware and to be more at, at ease with our emotions and our experiences. And the awesome thing about it is that we can practice it at any time, anywhere, doing anything. So we can practice mindfulness at work. We can practice mindfulness when we're uh, doing the dishes. We can practice mindfulness when we're out in nature, um, just observing and, and 
I'll tell you, that's, that's a huge uh, coping skill for me is being out in nature and, and hiking specifically. So there's a lot of ways we can practice mindfulness. And again, remembering that any skill requires us to practice. And as we practice and we stick with it, we get better at it. It literally rewires the brain. We know scientific evidence shows us that it, this, literally there's a study from Harvard <clears throat> that actually showed that 30 minutes of, my, of meditation practice daily shrunk the size of the amygdala, which is incredible. And again, that amygdala is the portion of our brain where fear and anxiety generates. So the things we're going to be talking about today, Camille, is a uh, really uh, is, a, is a great friend. We went to graduate school together and it's been a, um, just a gift to be able to for, hear her share some of the things that she has. So she's a licensed clinical social worker, but she also is completing her certification as a meditation coach and has some awesome skills that we're going to uh, practice today. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to Camille and um, look forward to this time we have together. Thank you so much, Jody. You guys, I am so really happy to be here today and to share with you something that I feel like can help us be resilient in our lives to the stressors, whether it's this time with the coronavirus or any time in our lives that things feel out of control, that we can really get that sense of control and being present in the moment and noticing what power that can have in our lives. So I know that we can spend a lot of time talking about it, but I'd actually like you guys to experience it. So we're going to do what we call a grounding meditation, just bringing us here and arriving in the present moment. And with meditation, we, we have a straight spine so that we can be alert, but yet comfortable. So if you can put your feet on the ground and just feel your feet there on the ground and then sitting in your chair or couch or wherever you are, being comfortable, but yet straight spine. And then either shutting your eyes, if that feels comfortable, or you can just have a soft gaze down towards the floor. And I'm going to ring a bell. And the thing with this bell that you've probably, if you've ever done meditation before, the bell is a signal of really listening in to the present moment, listening to that bell all the way through the beginning of the meditation, and then also at the end of the meditation. So we're gonna just do a little um, arrival grounding meditation. So go ahead and, and get into your comfortable spot there. Settling into this present moment. and simply noticing whatever's here for us. Any thoughts, sensations, emotions, simply noting what's here for you right now. No need to judge it as good or bad. Simply noticing what's here. Maybe you have some tension or tightness in your body. And being curious about that without judgment, just noting, huh, my, I've got some tightness in my left shoulder. Or maybe noticing an emotion, grief or sadness or some anxiety or fear. And simply noticing that, maybe by naming, fear is here for me. Or stress is here for me. <coughs> and noticing any thoughts that might be coming up for you. Thoughts of worry or concern, maybe thoughts of hope and joy, just simply with curiosity noticing what's here for you. What's here for you in this present moment?
And then shifting your attention and awareness to your body sitting here, maybe noticing the points of contact with the chair, your back, your bottom, your legs, just noticing where those touch the floor or the seat that you're on. Noticing the points of contact with your hands and your arms near your side or on your chair. Noticing the sensation of just being, just being present. We spend a lot of our lives being. This is our time to just be whatever's here. Noting what it feels like to be here now. And moving downward towards your legs and your feet, noticing the points of contact of your feet with the ground, of your socks on your feet, of each toe as it touches the ground. Connecting to the ground, connecting to the energy of the earth to bring us present, to bring us here right now. And if you notice your mind wandering off to other things, to thoughts and worries, simply bringing it back to the present moment of being here now with your feet on the ground, sitting on your chair, connecting to this present moment. Picturing your feet as if they are part of a tree, the roots of the tree going down into the earth, connecting to the earth, steady and strong. Trees go through all kinds of weather, storms, wind, rain, snow, and yet they're grounded, grounded, so that when the wind comes, they can be flexible, they can bend, they can move, yet staying grounded. And picture yourself in that same way, grounded like the tree. Your feet are on the earth. You're noticing what it feels like to be sitting here, to be in this present moment. And as thoughts and worries and concerns come up as they always do, that's like the wind. And noticing that it's there, And then noticing that it can take a background, that you can be present, noticing your feet on the ground, each toe where it touches the surface of the ground. Imagining yourself deeply rooted in the earth, connected. No need to go anywhere or do anything. Simply being here now.
go ahead and if you'd like, you can open your eyes or you can keep them shut if that feels good to you. Um, that was a grounding meditation practice. So to bring us present, you know, I love that Jody talked about how our mind can often go off into stories um, and we can make up um, worst case scenarios, right? We can do the what ifs of anxiety or we could do the I should have of depression. And really mindfulness teaches us to be present in what's happening, what's unfolding moment to moment for us now. And it requires that we practice, that each moment we take time to practice. So I want to talk to you about why mindfulness is such a big thing these days and why I believe in it and why I teach it as a clinical social worker, as a health and wellness person. I mind body connection is so important and it's such a big deal that we can really tune into it in the way we eat, in the way we move, in how we handle stress and chaos and things that come into our lives. So there's a lot of benefits to mindfulness, psychological benefits of being more aware of our thoughts, being able to um, shift our attention, being having more positive emotions, not being as reactive to things that happen, having more emotional regulation, and decreasing our rumination cycle. You know, I think about times that I've ruminated on something and it's like that little hamster on the wheel that just keeps going and going. And mindfulness can actually help us stop that cycle um, and, and decrease that. And we can also learn how to be non-judgmental. I love that Jody brought that up as well. Not judgmental of what's happening inside of us or outside of us, but just noticing it's there. There's a power in that. It's really all about curiosity. This is exciting too, especially with our concerns right now physical health, right? Wanting to take vitamins and keep ourselves healthy and eat healthy food. But mindfulness can have biological benefits. It can boost our immune system. Isn't that exciting? Like it can really help us when we keep ourselves from going into that fight or flight and we're able to respond rather than react. It can actually help our immune system to bounce back quickly. It can decrease cortical thinning, which is what is a problem in aging. So that's exciting. It can improve our processing. It can improve our attention. If you ever have a problem with like really focusing and having attention, it can improve that. It can also lower our cortisol, which is one of those, the hormones that we get with stress. It can improve our sleep. I love that Jody brought up sleep. So important for um, regenerating our body and rejuvenating us. And it can decrease chronic pain. And I've seen some of this for um, to really have more attention and focus, improve sleep, and some of those psychological benefits of just being in our lives, which is huge. So you may be curious about how it can help you. Maybe you've practiced it a bit before, or maybe you're wanting to learn a little bit more. Um, mindfulness can reduce our tendency to try and control our thoughts. Sometimes we get into these um, things where we want to control everything, right? Control ends, including where we think and how we think. You know, the way that this became really apparent to me is when I was, um, I was a participant in a mindfulness-based stress reduction class. And we were all sitting on the meditation cushion. And we're in our little Zen pose, you know, and we're just like supposed to be all, you know, really relaxed or, or at least noticing what pain. And what I noticed is that my mind was telling me really negative things. My mind was saying, Camille, why did you not get here on time? And you should have done this differently. And I don't think they like that you came in five minutes late. Now that you're, you know, and it just kept going and going. You guys probably all have related to something like this before. So we have a tendency in our mind to either, you know, ruminate or perseverate on, it, on a thought or to try to control our thoughts to make something happen. And what I love about mindfulness uh, is the triad of awareness. Really, it's bringing us present to our bodies. What is happening inside our bodies? It's easy when we're disconnected, when we're in autopilot, when we're just going, you know, like when you drive somewhere and you don't even remember how you got there, or you're sitting and watching a movie and popcorn's all of a sudden gone and you don't know what happened. It's really easy for us to get into those autopilots. And the triad of awareness, which is our emotions, thoughts and sensations, if we can notice those without judging them, 
huh, I noticed I'm feeling tension, or I noticed that the last five minutes, I don't remember it, right? Just noticing our emotions, thoughts, and sensations, just simply observing them with curiosity. You know, just like if you're trying to learn about a new person or wondering, you know, why someone does what they do, it's curiosity. Like, what is that about? I'm wondering why I'm doing that. Um, so it's almost like you're observing your life as a on the screen. I love how Jody Tari or the emotion, but really stepping back. I like to think of it as when we're mindful, the the thoughts and the worries and the stressors and the things that are there, they're still there, but they're more in the background. They're more taking a back seat. And what's in the front seat is our awareness of what's happening in the present moment. So we're really, really observing as if it was a movie screen, you know, the ebbs and flows of our thoughts. You know, there could be times you sit and do a meditation and you notice there's not a whole lot going on. And there could be other times, I know I've had clients say, you know, today I just had a really hard time meditating. And that's okay. That's part of this thing is that we can learn is training our brain. Really, it's teaching our brain how to come back again and again and again. So, um, one of the questions I know clients have asked me, and I think Jody and I have talked about this, is that does mindfulness, is it like the cure-all? Is it like this amazing pill, you take it and it's all good? No, it does not make our thoughts or emotions go away. They are still there. And sometimes those thoughts and emotions can be very uncomfortable. But what it teaches us is that instead of going and distracting ourselves from the emotion or using something to numb ourselves, whether that's food, alcohol, drugs, social media, whatever it is that we go to, to forget about the emotion, it teaches us to notice it. I notice it, I feel stress, or I notice I feel anxiety. Notice it. Noticing it, I don't know if you guys, when I was doing the grounding meditation, as we name it here, as we name it, we bring awareness to our thoughts, emotions, and sensations, they become less intense. They're still there, but they're more in that landscape, in that background, in the back seat there. Um, and we can move in, and they can move into more of the background of our experience. So um, I love the, to me, the most important thing about mindfulness is simply that curiosity. What am I noticing right now? It's so easy for us to get into, you know, a, a, of mind where we're stressed and we're worried up here in our head but if we bring ourselves back to the sensations of the body and the sensations in what we're noticing a lot of times you might notice oh i feel tightness tension or i feel my heart rate going up right just noticing what some of these things that happening. another important aspect is not judgment you know <laughs> um jody talked about that a little bit too. Like we sometimes it's so easy for us thoughts is oh that's a bad thought or that's a, a bad sensation to have. But when we use mindfulness in our lives, we are we're stepping up from making a judgment. We're just noticing, we're just noticing what's happening without having to make right or wrong or label it. So one of the um, mindfulness gurus and teachers I followed, and he actually created a program called Mindfulness Based Stress Reduction for people that he saw had chronic illness, who had chronic pain and other problems that they were hospitalized for, um, started the Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Program. And his name is John Kabat-Zinn. You guys may have heard of him. He's actually right now been doing a lot of tangible um, due to you know, what's happening for us. And so he talked about we have different attitudes that promote mindfulness. So I love that Jody talked about mindfulness as you know, sitting and meditating, which we're going to do, that's formal practice, but also mindfulness is about our attitude, the way we come to life. So these are the um, attitudinal foundations of mindfulness. There's non-judging, right? Just simply knowing what's happening without any judgment on it. I, I wrote this on my Facebook for my um, people that, that I work with, that patience is so important for us to just step back and allow things to unfold the way they're going to. Beginner's mind. Have you guys ever done something with playing tennis, trying a new recipe, 
the beginner's mind is very focused, right? Like, I want to learn how to do this. And when we can approach our mind, our lives for, through the beginner's mind, we see it in a whole new way. I remember when I was at a meditation retreat, and I had a beginner's mind where I was out and I was doing um, a walk, and I felt like we're seeing certain things before. Like, I'd never seen a tree more aware of what was happening in front of me. Trust is one, another one, right? Trusting process, trusting mindfulness is about that things will work out. Things will go in the way they're meant to. And non-striving. We live in a society that's all about achievement and get, do more and have more and work harder, right? Well, not striving is all about we don't need to force or push things or make things happen. We don't need to change the way our brain is. Our brain. We can simply notice it can accept what's happening acceptance is a huge one right accepting that this is me right now and that's okay and letting go letting go is another one so i love those and incorporating those into our lives um so we're going to talk about really how you guys can create a practice in your life because like anything you build a muscle we got to move you know that that arm my bicep i've got to be able to do lots of exercises with it's the same thing with our mental fitness. It takes practice. That's why they say meditation practice. So we're going to talk about how you guys can cultivate a meditation practice today. The first thing is really setting an intention of what matters to you. Do you want to release yourself from some of the, have some freedom from anxiety? Or do you want to feel more alert? Do you want to have your immune system, what matters to you? And then the second part is just setting aside time. So that is probably one of the biggest that a lot of my client people have is that time commitment can be different. But just eating well or exercise, when we do it, we get, our, you know, for the 10 minutes, our whole day, we can see a difference. So Setting time, it could be 15 to 45 minutes. Jody talked about how our changes after the 30 minutes. I've actually heard that if we can practice two times a day, at least 10 minutes, that we can change our, our brain, the neuroplasticity, we can create new neural pathways. It's really exciting. And then having, if you say, okay, I'm gonna practice 10 minutes a day for this whole week, and then things happen and you've got friends and family, things that come up, Yourself up. This is a practice. This is a practice in, in compassion. Mindfulness has, has that second part. You know, there's the presence and there's the compassion. And that's really important too. And then pausing. You don't need to necessarily sit down and do a formal meditation. You could pause throughout the day and connect to your breath and connect to your body and what's happening. And then giving yourself a, a space that you practice in. That could be like, you know, you're going to go to a certain bedroom or a location at your home by this certain tree. Um, really, place every day helps your brain and body get ready for meditation, for being. I, I talked to you guys a little bit about um, posture, which we want to be balanced and relaxed. We want to be alert. And it's okay if, you know, some people are meditating, they fall asleep. You know, being kind to yourself about that too, you know, because <laughs> that sometimes happens, but allowing ourselves to be as alert as possible, but also relaxed. Um, so sitting on a chair or cross-legged, you guys have probably seen people sitting in like the lotus pose, which is like sitting on a meditation cushion. You don't have to do that, but if you want to do that, you can. You can actually meditate while you're walking or standing as well. It's important to spine be upright and have a relaxed curve in your back. Having your shoulders relaxed and down, your hand, thigh, or your lap, or a small cushion, just so that they're not um, disturbing you, right? The, the hands are there, present. And then lengthening the back of your neck and having your chitly tuck like this. And then having a relaxed and tongue. So that's kind of the, the setup of, of meditating when we talk about formal meditation. Now, I walked you guys through an arrival meditation, which we did some grounding, and we talked about arriving in the body, right? So in medita mindfulness meditation, we choose an anchor that we, we crack. So if 
mind wanders, if we have thoughts or concerns or worries or stressors or whatever comes up, we establish what is our anchor. So in the grounding meditation, we did an anchor of the body, right? Coming back to feeling the body, feeling the feet on the earth, feeling your body on the chair. So establishing an anchor, which can steady your mind and deepen your presence so that when the mind wanders, you're shepherding it back. I love the word shepherding. I think of it so as like your little it wanders off. You just have that little thing that you're bringing it back. It's okay. That's what the brain does. Over and over again, we're bringing it back to um, that anchor. And your anchor can be the breath. It can be bringing you back to the sensation of breathing, be to the feeling of your chest rising and falling. It could be to the body and sensations in the body, can be to sounds, different sounds that might be coming up, or any kind of sensory experience. I have this a lot with children, and this is a really good, great grounding. If you guys have kids who are struggling with being present and feeling a little anxious, helping them five senses. What are you smelling? What are you touching? What are you hearing? All of that bringing them present. So we're going to do practice. Yay! Uh, so again, settling in with your feet on the floor and a straight spine and really just being present, being here in this moment. And I'll walk you through this practice. Again, we're going to have a bell to start and a bell to end. You can either shut or you can have a soft gaze downward. Just allowing yourself to settle in and connect here. Noticing again what it feels like to be here in this moment. Feet on the ground, toes sitting here in the chair, each point of your body to the earth, the chair. And then moving your awareness to your breath. What it feels like to be breathing right now for you. As the breath goes in the nose, out the mouth. And maybe allowing yourself to take a deep breath in and out. Settling in to this breath. And noting what the breath feels like, if it's shallow, deep, or slow. Noticing the experience of breathing. Noticing where you feel the breath. Is it as it goes in your nostrils, expanding your lungs? Simply noticing where you feel that breath the most. The breath is always with us. It can anchor us to this present moment. And noticing if you wander into thoughts, 
plans. And when you notice that, simply kind shepherding that awareness back to your breath. It's natural to wonder. No need to judge yourself. Simply notice it. And guide your attention back to breath. Noticing maybe coolness as it goes in and the warmth as your breath goes out. With awareness. And where is your mind now? Kindly bringing it back to your breath. Allowing the sensations of your body, the sounds, the thoughts, the emotions, to simply dissipate into the background and focus on your breath. Noticing the rise and fall of your chest and abdomen. The feeling of breathing. and bringing your mind back to your breath again and again. Remind yourself this is a practice. The breath is there as your anchor to steady your mind, to bring back present moment. And this meditation, recognize the time, the effort, the power of being of being here in this moment.
Thanks, everybody. I wish I could have all of you share during that meditation time. It's about recognizing, noticing, and allowing. So we can practice mindfulness in our daily lives. We can do it formally, just like we've done today with our grounding meditation and our mindfulness of breath meditation. And we can also do it just in our daily activities, in how we eat, sitting and being present with our food to the smell, the crunch, the flavors, the color of the food, really being present to the experience of eating and walking what it feels like when your foot hits the ground, when your leg moves, that experience of walking. We can do any activity with mindfulness, brushing our teeth, doing the laundry, really just noticing what's happening in our body as we do it. So those are some of the informal practices we can do. And really, honestly, anything you do, you could do with mindfulness. You can do your work with mindfulness, maintaining that focus on the present moment. Formal practice, we talked a little bit about how to begin and establish a, a formal practice, setting aside some time, noticing what it feels like to have that stillness in your life. You can do it while sitting, lying down, walking, kneeling, or being in the lotus, as we call the lotus pose with your legs crossed. So you got to experience a taste of mindfulness meditation today, and I hope you've enjoyed it. I know it's made a huge different life in anxiety and the stress and how into that in a, in a different way now. Um, so meditation practice, we talked about it decreasing the size of your amygdala, helping the frontal lobe to be where we can process, we can be needed, we can really be present. Um, focusing, we're focusing on what our inward experience through meditation. There's a lot of free meditations on YouTube that you guys can find as well as some apps that are really great, Simple Habit, Calm. Insight Timer is my favorite. Um, there are meditation teachers on there. You could do anything from a minute meditation to an hour. Um, you can do recorded meditations with the sounds of nature. I actually have um, a four-week class that I'm teaching that's a mindfulness meditation for uncertain times. It'll be coming out May 20th, and it goes until June 10th. So if that's something you guys are interested in, um, I think my face is over it right now. <laughs> but um, just let, let us know. Um, you can email me at Camille at flourishwellnessconsulting.com or call 385-242-3242. Um, and I love helping people into stress and learn about the power of now. So thank you so much for having me today.